Hello everyone. Welcome to new video of Whiteout Survival. I am back with a new guide video for you. Time to be champion. Because our today's topic is Alliance Championship. Today I will show what is this event, how to participate, how to win, and what is reward of this event. Let's jump in our video. Alliance Championship is such an event where whole alliance can participate. This is a type of state versus state, where two alliance from two states fight each other. But this battle is not any real battle, this is a battle of power and strategy. You can say, Alliance Championship is the mini version of SVS. This event has basically three stages, registration stage, preparation stage, and battle stage. In registration stage, players will sign up for the battle. They will deploy their troops to any lane of their choice. I will show how to deploy properly. Next is preparation stage. This is very important stage for R5 and R4. R5 and R4 will arrange the team with perfect player type and combination. Next is battle stage. In this stage, we have nothing to do. The battle will be done automatically. We can see the replay after battle. Now, let's talk about the game mechanics. There are three lanes in the battlefield, and each lane has one flag. You can deploy your troops to any lane. Each lane will have 20 main combatants. Extra players will be added as substitute. Players will go for head-to-head -head battle against the opponent alliance. They will keep fighting until they are defeated. But if a player gets victory against two opponents, he will come back. When your one lane will defeat all opponent in that lane, your lane will be winner and capture the lane's flag. When alliance get victory in two lanes, that means capture two flags. That alliance will be the winner of the round. This is the basic mechanism of the event. Each lane will have minimum 20 combatants. But if anyone is not fighting directly, still he has chance to get reward from the event. So, if you want to be winner of any round, you have to win minimum two lanes. If your alliance is strong, your alliance can focus on three lanes. But if your alliance is not strong and have low number of players, I suggest to focus any two lanes and put all strong player there. And keep the third lane weak with low power players. So, even if your alliance is not strong, you can win the battle by putting pressure on any two lanes. Remember, each lane will have 20 players. That the strongest players will fight last and weakest players will fight first. This is a one versus one battle, so if you are free to play, you will never get any whale in your opponent. Because whale will stay on top, and only a whale will face opponent whale. You will face someone who is equally powerful like you. If your R4 and R5 make proper arrangement, you can get weaker opponent. But if your R4 and R5 make wrong arrangement, you may get stronger opponent. Now we will check how to participate in Alliance Championship. You can see, there are three lanes, each lane has some combatants and extra players. And each lane has power according to combatants. As example, the left lane has 20 combatants and 6 extra players. Only the top 20 players by power in each lane will fight. You can randomly take part in any lane, your R4. And R5 will do the adjustment. What is the work of R4? and R5. If you are R4 or R5, you have to analyze each lane. If you see any lane is becoming weak, you can move players from other lane to make the weak lane strong. I already said, if your alliance is not big and strong, you can focus on any two lanes. Which lane should be focused is your choice. You should do meeting with other R4 and R5. If you are R4, you should do adjustment in such a way that Minimum to lanes get the whales. Now, I will show how to deploy your army in the battle. Click the troops logo. You will find an option, dispatch. Now, you have to select your hero and troops. This battle is expedition battle. Heroes use their expedition skill. I suggest you to pick your strongest infantry hero, strongest lancer hero, and strongest marksman hero as team. If you don't do anything, they will be picked by default. Troop selection is not like Frostfire Mine. In Frostfire Mine, 
your highest level troops automatically come in battle. But here, you have to pick troops, as you do in Expedition PvP battle. But you should not directly deploy like this. With some tricks, you can make yourself stronger. As you can see, I have equal number of infantry, lancer, and marksmen. My power is showing 208 million. I will do some tricks to increase this power. First, I will go to Sunfire Castle. Here we have two ministers, which can make us powerful with some bonus. Minister of Defense and Minister of Strategy. Both ministers can give you bonus, which can make you powerful for Alliance Championship. But the problem is, you cannot be two minister at same time. So I suggest you to go for Minister of Strategy. Both minister gives combat bonus, but Minister of Strategy gives diplomat capacity, which is very helpful in Alliance Championship. Apply for it. Next thing, which can make us powerful is Pet Bonus. We have to activate Pet Skill before deploying in Alliance Championship. City bonus like Troops Attack, Lethality. Also help to become powerful in Alliance Championship. But if you are free to play, you should avoid them. Because they cost huge amount of gems. Now let's see how much power we are getting from pet skill. See, the power is 228 million. Before using pet skill, power was 208 million. I got 20 million extra power for using pet skill. But we are not done yet. This is an expedition type battle, so troops formation will play a major role here. I explain troops formation. In my troops formation guy, if you want to know, check it. Link given in pinned comment. In this video, I will show what is the best formation you should use in Alliance Championship. If you use 100% infantry, your power will be very high. See, my power is showing 257 million, but this formation is not good. You cannot win battle without Lancer and Marksman. The best formation which you should use is 45% infantry, 25% Lancer. 30% Marksmen. Infantry stay in front line, they have to attack and defend at same time. They take most damage from enemy, so infantry is higher in number. Lancer and Marksmen stay in back, but Lancer always stays safe from both opponent infantry and Lancer. Moreover, opponent Marksmen target our infantry, so Lancer don't take much damage, so Lancer should be lower in number than Marksmen. Our marksmen take high damage from opponent lancer. So marksmen should be higher in number than lancer. But lancer and marksmen don't engage in hand-to-hand -hand fight. So lancer and marksmen both should be lower in number than infantry. So you should use this formation. 45% infantry, 25% lancer, 30% marksmen. See? Now my power is 233 million. In the beginning, it was 208 million. After using pet skill, it became 228 million. When I use correct formation, it becomes 233 million. If I get bonus from Minister of Strategy, it will increase more. City bonus will increase the power, but I already said, free to play player should avoid this. After the deployment, you can update your team or lane. As many times as you want, during registration stage, when you deploy your team, you will find an option, update troops. If you think you are missing something, or you need to change something, you can update. You can click on team to check your alliance members and their power and lanes. You will see a green location mark. It will indicate in which lane you are fighting. If anyone who is stronger than weakest combatants participate in battle, he will automatically be the combatant. And the previous combatant will be substitute so any strong teammate can replace a weak teammate during the registration if you want to participate in battle. And if you are substitute in a lane, you should check other lanes. Because if you find someone weaker than you, you can replace him and you can be combatant of that lane. But it may not work if any or for change your lane. Click on any player to check his hero and troops. You can see the power is set in descending order. Weakest player is in number 1, and strongest player is in number 20. After everyone sign up for battle, R5 and R4 should take decision about the lane and player adjustment. 
game will do matchmaking, and six alliances with almost equal power will be matched up for battle. The championship will use round robin model type. Six alliances will fight each other in five rounds. After battle starts, you cannot change your army. But before every round, R4 and R5 can adjust the lane and players. You have nothing to do in battle stage. You can only see your battle replay to check whether you are winning or losing. In each round, when you are defeated, you will be immediately disqualified. You will not be able to fight again. If you win one battle, you will get chance to fight again. When you win to battles, your troops will retreat. After each battle, your power will be low. In that round, your alliance will fight in five rounds with other alliances. The winner will be decided by a point table on the basis of flag capture. Winner alliance will be ranked up. This is all about registration, preparation, battle and victory. Now we will check what rewards we will get from Alliance Championship. First, we will get access of Alliance Championship shop. We will get Championship badge and we can use it to buy items from this shop. This shop contains Chief Gear Upgrade Material, Shards, Ted Upgrade Materials and many other things. I explained in details about this shop, what you should buy and what you should avoid in my shop guide. For more information, you can check this link given in pinned comment. There are different ranks in Alliance Championship, where you can get specific amount of championship badge. Try to win the Alliance Championship to increase your Alliance rank. There is also K.O. Reward. If you defeat two enemies, you will get leveled to reward. This reward comes after end of each round. The highest rank is ultimate. When your Alliance will reach this rank, all Alliance members will get one city skin, one marching skin, one frame and one nameplate. For more information, you can check this link given in pinned comment. Your alliance also get a statue, I will discuss it someday in future. Alliance Championship is all about strategy, R4, and R5 should think properly when they are arranging the team. I repeat, if your alliance is not very strong, you should focus only on two lanes. Don't forget to use bonus sand formation. When you are deploying in Alliance Championship, participation is important. Even if you are not fighting, you can also get reward. That is all for this video. To watch more, subscribe.